Hey everybody, welcome to today's episode of Cheap Shots, T-mount preset multi-blade masterpieces. We're talking lenses like the Spiratone 135 and all its relatives. I remember pretty early on in my journey into vintage photography, there was a lot of discussion in the early 2000s about the Spiratone 135. It had all these wonderful blades and produced amazing bokeh. Now, this was before mirrorless and before video was commonplace on DSLRs. And people were really talking about these lenses and forms. So, honestly, I'm a little surprised there aren't more threads out there about this genre of lenses today. They're great for video, they're great on, on mirrorless cameras, and it turns out, of course, that Spiratone didn't manufacture these lenses. Uh, they were made by other manufacturers for Spiratone, similar to what goes on with other manufacturers like Soligar, Vivitar, etc. Uh, perhaps the original makers were Sankar, or Acura, Sun, Tamron, Mataki, uh, some were made by Kino, uh, some were made by Tokina. There are all sorts of different manufacturers, but they have a few things in common. During my travels, I came across one, and it wasn't a Spiratone, but it was looked exactly like the Spiratone 135, and it was branded Vorn. It was dirt cheap, maybe 5 or $10. And what was interesting about it was that it had some fungus, and it was the first lens that was I ever took apart. It was so easy to, to remove. All of the elements were separated. It was very easy to just pick out the ones, uh, get to them very simply just by unscrewing it. I didn't need any tools. Uh, it was just so simple to take apart that I was able to successfully clean it and then return it back into working order without doing any damage. I had never done that before, uh, and it was a great experience, and it proved that it can be done. Anyway, I of course expected very little from this lens, and when I tested that out, what did I see? Well, like many vintage lenses, especially um, the, especially these T-set pre-mount, uh, preset T-mount lenses, there were some real surprises, some real limitations, but some really amazing results as well. Used under the right circumstances, you can take some phenomenal pictures, pictures and video. So what's it like using these lenses? I think there are a lot of similar qualities that pertain to lenses of this ilk. And it's easy to spot them if you look for these traits. First of all, they're usually T-mount. They're usually preset. That means there are actually two aperture rings. One that you can set to a limit as to what the uh, aperture can be. And a second to actually move the diaphragm. Instead of having clicks, a preset aperture allows you to slowly and, and smoothly change that aperture, um, and it makes a, an excellent transition from dark to light, almost as if you are doing a transition if you're doing video. These lenses are usually many-bladed. That means they have 10, 12, 15, 17 different individual aperture blades, so the background rendering, the bokeh, is always circular no matter what f-stop you're shooting at. They're usually thin, skinny in design, so they're a little bit smaller than some similar spec lenses. And they're simplistic manual focus lenses from the 60s and 70s. So what are the characteristics of these lenses when you're shooting them? Well. They're very simply designed, and that means that they tend to be quite sharp. Fewer lens elements means less glass for light to pass through. The bokeh, as I mentioned, is circular, even stop down. As telephoto lenses, they do a great job of blowing out the background. They give a real vintage look. Maybe it's because they're uncoated or single coated or have simple coatings, but whatever the reason, um, they can be very sharp and still have some aberrations but also be very flare prone. So they show less contrast um, compared to other lenses, especially if you're shooting without a lens hood or shooting with the sun somewhere in the frame. Usually they have oil on the blades. Now, some people say that this is not an issue. And personally, I've never tried to remedy it on any of these lenses, although virtually all of my lenses show this oil. 
because of the way because of the way the blades render i've never had a, a a reason to clean them they don't create sticking it's not a problem and uh, it hasn't created haze in my glass but you may have a different experience so talk about it in the comments tell us what you think what are my recommendations when shooting with these lenses well first buy a lens hood there are a lot of metal 55 or 58 millimeter lens hoods that screw in. Those would be perfect for these lenses. They help a lot. And because we're talking telephoto lenses, you can get them fairly deep. Because they're T-mount, you have a couple of options when it comes to adaptation. You can get a vintage T-mount adapter to a common mount that you already have a, an adapter to your mirrorless camera with, say, uh, say a Canon FD or Minolta MD or Pentax or Nikon uh, uh, adapter and you can screw that into your T-mount and then connect it to your other adapter that connects to your camera or my preferred method which is a lot more straightforward is to just get a T-mount adapter for your system. I have it for Sony it's wonderful you just screw your lens into the adapter and then connect it to your camera just like it was anything else. My next piece of advice is to collect a few of these. You'll get the same look at different focal lengths. Personally, I have an 85, a 105, a 135, a 180, a 200, and they all have similar renderings. So it's great to use them together to get a same kind of visual representation, but be able to have a lot of versatility in your kit. Now, let's take a look at a few of these.
get them pretty cheap. And they're pretty good. They provide a very specific rendering. They're plentiful and available, and perhaps most of all, they're overlooked. So don't you overlook them. If you come across them in your travels, buy them, and above all, use them. These aren't expensive collector's pieces. They're meant to be used. Get out there and get shooting.